Uh, Katie, thanks for joining us on Exclusive Insight TV. Uh, we understand you've been back for four weeks now. Could you explain to us how uh, 2017 has looked for you so far? Yeah, it's, it's great to be home. We had the uh, World Championships on at Rotterdam this year. Um, so we had a big Australian contingent of triathletes over there in Rotterdam. and um, was my second World Champs. My first one was in 2015 in Chicago. So I was really happy to get the result. We, we came first and got the gold medal So in power triathlon. Um, and so I compete with a guide and my guide for the race was McKeeley Jones who won the silver medal at Sydney Olympics. So it was just a fantastic campaign and, and it, in many ways 2017 was a bit of a challenge coming back um, from Rio last year and I had a few sort of niggly injuries so it was sort of a slow build this year and just getting the foundation in place and new coach, new training environment on the Gold Coast. Um, and so we, we prepared really well and went over to Rotterdam and got the goal, so it was great. Yeah. And, and I suppose 2018 as well, such an exciting time, looking forward to the next six months with the Parrot Triathlon uh, yeah. coming to the Commonwealth Games yeah. in the Gold Coast for the first time. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, overall power sport is just growing. We've, we see, we've seen the Australian team at uh, the Rio Paralympics, we came fifth overall, which was outstanding. And it just shows the growth and maturity of the sport. And we all know the big stars like Kurt Fernley and um, you know, Maddie Di Rosario, and there's so many um, up and coming, like Is Is Isis Holt, sorry, who's our 100 metre sprinter. So, lots of great things happening in power sport, and, um, and with that means that there's more power sport getting involved in the Com Games. So, Power Triathlon will make its debut um, here on the Gold Coast at the Com Games. And we've got some outstanding power triathletes in Bill Chaffee, who's a, a world champion times four, I think, and, and Nick Beveridge, who um, studies here on the Gold Coast. He trains with me with Dan Atkins at Bond Juni as well. And, um, and he'll be there representing the green and gold next year. So with such a busy 2016 and 2017, it sounds like you haven't had a chance to take a break. How do you rejuvenate ahead of uh, the Commonwealth Games next year? Uh, well, I think it's... Um, you know, it's, it's always good to have a coach to sort of, you know, steady you down a little bit. And um, I've had a couple of weeks off and time with friends and family. And, um, you know, I've got a girls weekend away this weekend. So it's all about balance. Um, and I've got a fantastic, uh, I work with this fantastic role with the Australian Paralympic Committee. So it's, for me, it's, um, it's quite easy just to wind down and take some time out. And, um, you know, triathlon is a demanding sport with swim, bike, run. Um, so we'll just slowly build into it for 2018 campaign. You touched on it there, but your role with the committee, obviously, now that you're starting to embark in that space, it must be good to obviously give back to the sport as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been involved, um, you know, I guess I'm more of a, a mature athlete. I've come into power triathlon at the latest part of my life. So for the last sort of 15, 20 years, I've worked in a, a number of sports marketing roles with the NRL, Melbourne Storm and and and. Uh, promoting opportunities for people with disabilities to play sports has always been a massive passion of mine and so I had this fantastic opportunity through Lynn Anderson who's the CEO of the Australian Paralympic, Paralympic Committee um, to work in a, in a marketing role and, and, and also um, thanks to, I mean it was fantastic to get that gold medal in, in Rio last year but with that it's brought enormous opportunities for me to really promote that platform around access for people with disabilities and for me that's been in the shape of my new foundation called Sport Access Foundation um, which is about providing grants for kids with disability to play sport and I'm so excited we just um, have awarded our first three recipients and I won't tell all the details just yet, but there, you know, one, one, one kid is from country Victoria. He's a swimmer. There's a, a, a para rower and, and, a, and, a, and an athlete in there. So, so exciting and just so fantastic to help the new next generation of kids coming through to have a go and hopefully, you know, go all the way. Yeah, and thinking long term, I know how excited you are with your charity. What's the vision? What, what are you hoping to achieve in the next three years just on that space? I've got some big goals, you know. Um, I'd love to see Sport Access Foundation as a real key influencer in the space of promoting opportunities for people with disabilities and also, I guess, um, helping national sporting organisations like Triathlon Australia, Swimming Australia, Rowing Australia, guiding them on that path of inclusion and developing best practices and pathways, particularly from the grassroots level. We know it's really challenging with all the fantastic volunteers in Australia at that grassroots level, their mums and dads that are coaching 
And then when they've got a child that has special needs, how do you sort of integrate that child into soccer or basketball? You know, if they might be in a wheelchair, amputee, or have some intellectual challenges. So it'd be great. It's, it's just fantastic that that conversation is happening. And I think more and more there'll be more visibility of kids with disabilities. So with disability at that level. Well, thanks for joining us on Exclusive Insight TV, Katie, and we wish you all the best for the coming weeks ahead. Thank you so much. Cheers.